Last summer, the director of national intelligence released a bombshell report that rocked the UFO community. It confirmed that vehicles of unknown origin and capability are operating on a reoccurring basis with seeming impunity and in restricted U.S. military airspace to boot. The report also cited 144 incidents since 2004 in which the U.S. military detected these enigmatic aircraft. And while the government is seemingly taking the issue seriously, there's one military branch that has seemed to have gone AWOL on the issue, the United States Air Force. Former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense Christopher Mellon joins us now to discuss. Christopher, thank you so much for joining the show. So uh, first of all, tell, why do you think the Air Force is not really saying much about this? I mean, this seems to be pretty big news. Yeah, it's baffling. And from the beginning, it's been the U.S. Navy. It's been Navy videos. It's been Navy reports. Uh, they've been very quiet. There's been a traditional stigma in the Air Force. I think that's part of it. But this, this lack of responsiveness to this degree is rather baffling. And do you think, uh, why do you think, what do you think explains that silence? Is it just a, is there genuinely something that is being covered up? Or is it a kind of bureaucratic, well, we don't have to be transparent with you. You know, who are you? We're the government, that kind of thing. Yeah, so, so we don't know. But it's, it's, uh, it does cause you to wonder if perhaps they're covering something up. Because they released a report in 2015 identifying 1,800 incidents between 2010 and 2015 of unknown tracks of interest. Now this report comes forward and they seem to have virtually nothing to say and nothing to contribute. We know that F-15s have been scrambled, that's press reporting. We know that NORAD has hundreds of unknowns every year in, in the atmosphere and thousands in space. Um, it, it's rather bizarre that they, they claim the UAP task force, they're still trying to get information from the Air Force after all these months. Hey, Christopher, when did you first get interested in this in this issue? What was it that got you into it? Uh, I was a young boy and saw a home video that uh, essentially a neighbor had made, and it showed a large UFO in broad daylight transiting through perfectly clear blue skies uh, with just a few cumulus clouds. It went into one of those, disappeared, emerged out the other side, and it was stunning. I don't know what ever became of that, but that, that piqued my curiosity. So as the former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense, I think us average people believe that people like you that have had these positions should know what these things are and should know whether or not we've been visited by aliens and if uh, if we've got some of the bodies hiding in Nevada. So what is it? I mean, <laughs> I, mean really, I know it's, it's, it's kind of laughable, but I mean, that's that's what we think. So who would know what what these phenomenon are? Um, if there is somebody in the government, would it be the Air Force? Is that why they're mum about it? Do you think, well, they, they know what's going on here or who would know? That's a real that's a real possibility. And the sudden interest after a half a century of disinterest on the part of the American people, the American public, the sudden surge of interest from Congress has got them, it seems, in a very awkward position. And they seem to be struggling to determine what to say about it and how to say it and to whom. What, and why? Like, what, what, why? Where does this struggle come from? Undoubtedly, there are some classified sources that they're very skittish about, and so they they have concerns about revealing that. I'm sure that's part of it. There's also traditional bureaucratic resistance in the Air Force to anything associated with this issue. For example, we have Air Force pilots flying in the same test ranges as Navy pilots. The Air Force pilots have better instrumentation. They're not reporting the UFOs that the Navy is seeing in the same places at the same general time. When you say skittish class, classified sources, do you mean they're, do you mean they're skittish about uh, who these sources are and that they might not be reliable people or that we're, we're concerned about revealing who they are? because they're, they're sensitive. I, I'm talking about them. technical sources, technical yeah. sources and capabilities. So we have a massive space surveillance network and apparatus and it defies belief to think that there have not been any unidentifieds tracked by that apparatus over such an extensive period of time. Certainly, if the Navy's had so many incidents, the Air Force must have had many, many more because they're, they're looking at far larger areas with far greater fidelity uh, all over the world. 
what has been the most uh, persuasive or intriguing thing that you came across while you were serving? Well, at the time, there was an incredible taboo against this uh, discussing this topic at all. I had a Navy officer call me up one time from a Navy base and describe an incident that had just occurred. He had witnessed the UFO himself. He spoke with the pilot. Uh, right after he landed, the pilot wanted to get back in the jet and take off and chase this thing. And, and sort of elliptical, uh, ovoid-shaped UFO had circled this U.S. Navy fighter aircraft in broad daylight over an Air Force base in Florida. I think it... it most people would have a hard time, right, understanding why the Navy and the Air Force are so not in sync on this, why one, you know, government, military institution would, would, would is there, it's truly a cultural difference? Is, is that what you think it is? I do. I also think it's a mission difference. So if you're the Navy, it's easier to talk about lapses in air defense than if you're the Air mm. Force. That's an acknowledgement of mission failure, right? right. So if we so had the Air Force is going to be reporting sea creatures and the <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's that's what this report is like. It's very strange. We have a report on UAPs that comes in. It's almost all Navy information. It would be like a report on mysterious submarines off the coast of the United States, where all the reporting is Air Force and there's nothing from the Navy. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's no shame in getting your airspace invaded by an alien. Well, like, why <laughs> do they think that they're going to get hauled before Congress? And be like, how did you allow these aliens to, like, you know, get into your zone outside Hawaii or whatever? Uh, there are a lot of unanswered questions that that uh, are due, I think, for, and they're going to be receiving most likely from Capitol Hill, and some of them will be. Uh, along those lines, how, how is this happening? Why is this happening? Uh, some of it's going to be, why have you not been more forthcoming about this information and sharing this information? So I think there are, are quite a range of questions that remain unanswered. We're going to find out we were subsidizing the aliens. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're authorizing NIH uh, experiments there. Oh, is that what they were it, trained yeah, so at the School of America's. La yeah. Lab creatures that are now <laughs> super yeah. sophisticated. Well, um, imagine, imagine for a second that you do have something very sensitive that you're trying to conceal, and Congress is asking you for information about that general topic. You want to be responsive, but you also want to protect that information. How do you square that circle? Right, and so I think there, And so I think that's part of the problem they're, they're confronted with. So can you tell us from your perspective, what are the what's the chance that these unidentified aerial phenomenon, they are our own military, maybe our own secret weaponry, maybe being developed even in the private sector alongside the military? Um, what are the chances it's a foreign military versus the chances that it's actual alien? Well, it's very interesting. The, the report submitted by the director of national intelligence said we see no evidence that's from a foreign government. Uh, none of the instances of the 144 incidents they identified could be explained by U.S. classified research programs. So that leaves you wondering then what hypothesis best fits the facts. And frankly, the alien hypothesis fits the facts hmm. better than, well, than the alternatives. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to, I have to say that. Hmm. That's exciting. I know Robbie doesn't believe it. But <laughs> well, you, Robbie? I'm not questioning our subject matter expert. I, I haven't <laughs> seen any evidence and I'm, I'm innately skeptical of it, but, uh, but uh, no, it, there it is. It's, it's good to be skeptical. That's the appropriate uh, position scientifically. We should be yeah. skeptical and continue no, and, to and, be. And, 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 and again, if our subject matter yeah. expert thinks that's the most likely explanation, I want to hear oh, that yeah. actually said rather than, you know, danced around and be like, well, we don't really know. Who knows what it could be? So. I mean, the good news is, look, if it is alien and we've been having these aliens visiting us for the last, what, 20 years that we know of, that we that we have documentation of, uh, probably much longer than that. If we go back to all of the people who've made claims, um, then they're benevolent, right? Or, or at least they're they're not hostile. They Otherwise, they would have. Right. You know, so there should this is so to me, it's exciting. It's not something to fear. It's exciting unless they're playing the long game and they're just waiting to attack us. You know, they're like plotting out because they live a thousand years, you know, we only live like 70 and they live a thousand. And so they're right. waiting for their time. I don't know. But otherwise, I think it's kind of exciting. I think they're probably messing with our elections. 
Maybe, maybe that's well, them. <laughs> this maybe. goes back to at least World War II. And the reason we're concerned about it from a national security standpoint is so much of this activity is in and around military training and operating areas and military facilities. Yeah. Uh, if they were just cruising through national parks or something, you know, we'd have a lot less concern. But in some cases, they're swarming Navy ships. They're swarming Air Force bases. They're interrupting planned uh, training operations. So that's why it becomes a concern from a national security standpoint. Although some experts on this issue say that they believe that the that if it is alien, that they're actually preventing us from using nuclear weapons, that they're, that these uh, sightings began after we started testing nuclear weapons and deploying nuclear weapons, and that they are, in fact, uh, they know something about how that affects maybe space better than we do, and they're coming in to kind of prevent us from doing this. That's one of the theories that has been out there, that they've been disarming even nuclear weapons. Maybe they're saving us from ourselves. You're quite right. It's not just a theory. It's been testified to by numerous retired military officers, Air Force officers themselves. And yet, to my knowledge, Congress has never asked that question. That is hanging out there. It's a sensational claim. It should be easy to put it to rest one way or the other. But Congress has never asked the question. Hmm. Well, maybe I should go, I guess, be in Congress, start asking questions. <laughs> Well, Christopher Mellon, right. we really appreciate you joining us. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you very much. Appreciate your interest in the subject. Thank you. And more rising right after this.